So the next two films I want to talk about are from an underground uh, female director from mostly who worked in the 90s. She unfortunately died of cancer in when she was early 30s and so didn't get to keep making films which is so unfortunate because her films are so good and they're she was a um from the midwest relocated to san francisco and then became an independent filmmaker in the most extreme sense in that her films are barely any budget type independent filmmaker her name is sarah jacobson and she wrote and directed these films um and they were played on tcm underground last week and they're available uh, i think they're available on dvd from well maybe not but they were restored by the american genre film archive which is out of Austin, Texas. And if you don't know about the American Genre Film Archive, really look them up. Check them out. They've restored a whole bunch of great stuff. I hope these films come out on DVD because I will buy them um, because I really enjoyed them and I want to rewatch them. The first one's a short called I Was a Teenage Serial Killer. And it is so Riot Girl. It is so Riot Girl. Um, it is about a, a teenager who... Um, is just continually disappointed by men in a very um, brutal way and basically harassment and and abuse. And she's just so fucking sick of it and so full of rage, so full of rage. She just starts killing all the men that get that come into her life. So she kills um, a cat collar. She kills a guy who took off a condom in the middle of having sex with her. She kills, um, I can't remember the other one. She, eventually she meets a guy who also likes to kill, but they're only killing men. And he's like, I, as a man, know that men are terrible. And that's why I, I kill them because they're, I know them and I know that they're terrible. But then one day he decides to try to kill a woman and she's just like, what the fuck, man? You, you can't even, you can't even stick to what the plan. And so she ends up killing him too because she realizes that, no men are safe. They're all terrible. Um, and then and then the film ends with her coming to a realization that maybe she can just be full of rage and hate men and not necessarily kill them all. Although it's kind of left on an ambiguous note as to whether she's going to keep killing men or not. Um, it's it's delightful and wonderful and, and a real manifestation of female rage in a way that I hadn't really seen much of. And I can't even imagine how uh, amazing a film like this must have been in 1983 because uh, there really wasn't much like this at, at that time. Um, but it's like it's almost like a, 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 a zine come to life. Um, it's it's really good. Just fantastic. Um, and again, made on like practically no budget. Um, the next one, this one was made with some help from... Um, I'm forgetting which musician it was, one of the musicians, um, and Tamara Jenkins. So Tamara Jenkins, obviously, director, she did, um, not Tamara Jenkins, it's the other one, shit. The one who did the, um, Tamara Jenkins is the, like, fancy one, Tamara Davis, is it Tamara Davis? I always get those names confused. Hold on, I'm Googling it. Yeah, okay, with some help from Tamara Davis, not to be convinced, confused with Tamara Jenkins, Tamara Davis, married to Mike D from Beastie Boys, is the one who did um, TV4 and Billy Madison, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, she helped get the fundraising for this film, even though by fundraising I mean like nine thousand dollars or something really tiny like that. The film is called Mary Jane's Not a Virgin Anymore, and it stars Lisa Gerstein as the titular Mary Jane who works at a grungy movie theater in San Francisco. It's a real movie theater in San Francisco. She mostly does live um, shows now, though they're not movies. But it was a real movie theater at the time. And um, her sort of trials and tribulations as she's about to graduate from high school and attempts to not be a virgin anymore. The first um, scene in it is this horrible sex scene where a, one of her coworkers has taken her on a date and taken her out to a cemetery and is just grinding on her and not trying to do anything helpful and eventually she's just like this hurts I, I hate it get off me and it's it's 
it's so wonderful and awful because it was such a bad experience for her, but at least she stopped and was like, no. And then she spends the rest of the movie sort of asking everyone else about their first times and trying to figure out what's right for her. She eventually discovers that um, masturbation is great. She thought that only losers masturbated and everybody is like, no, this is how you find out what you like. This is free. It's a stress relief. You don't need to deal with other people. You're not going to have a baby. Like, it's great. So there's this amazing scene where it shows her masturbating for the first time. And the way it's shot is almost heavenly. Um, and I got to say, it was a wonderful artistic rendering of what it's like, <laughs> like to masturbate. It was so good. Um, and not gross, which a lot of times you see masturbation in films, especially if it's male masturbation. And it comes out, it's just gross. It's, it's filmed gross. It's filmed to be a joke. Um, all kinds of things. Even on Sex and the City, it's it's a joke when when um, Samantha masturbates, and in this case, no, it's just literally a pleasurable stress relief, and it's it's beautiful how it's shot. Um, later, having discovered what she likes, when she's on another date with somebody else and it's someone she really really likes, as opposed to the first guy who was just like, I'll try it. Um, they're making out, she doesn't want to have sex, and then eventually she's like, Hey, why don't we try some things? And she gets him basically to do the things that she likes to her and it, is it sex is it not sex depends on, on on your definition because you know is sex only sex if it, there's vaginal penetration heterosexual sex if there's vaginal penetration I don't know sure seemed like a sex scene to me um even though there was no dick involved and it and it had a great little sort of romantic postcoital moment and it was a it was a lovely scene and it was like one of the most realistic sex scenes I've ever seen, but not realistic in a porn way, just realistic in like two fumbling bodies trying to be a little less fumbling. Um, it's the kind of film that, or film sex scene that you wish you'd seen when you were younger. So you're like, oh, this is how it should go. Instead of seeing, you know, all of the really terrible sex scenes that, um, not terrible, but like, you know, highly choreographed sex scenes that set you up for, you know, disappointment um really good film I liked it so much uh I really really hope the American genre film archive puts this out on DVD blu-ray I will buy it immediately I think several of their films have been released to or licensed to shout so maybe shout will release it um vinegar syndrome I don't know or all I know is I want it I will buy it these movies are really great I was feel like everybody should see these movies. These are the kind of movies I think teenage girls should be watching. Um, and I'm glad that Sarah Jacobson got to make these films. I'm sad that she didn't get to make more films. But, you know, you make two perfect films, and what are you going to do? That's great. You, you, she's secured her legacy. I wish more people had seen these films. And now that they're restored by um, the America Genre Film Archive, hopefully they'll get, you know, rediscovered and placed in the pantheon as they should in great teen movies.